Are you wondering how to deal with all the waste that comes from these quail? I'm going to show you how to do that in today's video, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house, if that's the way you want to go about it. Today we're talking about quail, specifically how to deal with the waste. And there's a couple of different ways you could deal with this. It depends a lot on your setup. If you've got them in an outside hutch like this, or if you've got them in an inside hutch and maybe stacking cages like I'll show you here in a minute. I've got down here on the end that just sitting outside. All right, so this is my stacking cage setup that I've used in the garage before. It's a little off kilter right now. It needs to be kind of straightened up. It's just sitting out here because it's not in use, but you can see there's a dropping pan underneath the cage right there. If you need to know how to build these, I do have a link I'll put up in, I think, probably that corner. Let's hope I got it right this time. And uh, you can go watch the video on how to uh, build these kinds of cages right here. But these dropping pans, uh, you're going to have to empty those at least a couple of times a week, depending on how many birds you have in there, probably once every about three four days. That's about how much uh, the waste kind of accumulates in there. As long as you can keep it dry, there's not going to be too much odor to it. So that's why I like those little water cups that I've got there. And um, I've shown those in videos before. I'll put a link up in the uh, video, I think, again, up in that corner. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to get to that video, show where I got those, and uh, a little bit of a special discount on those uh, cups if you're looking for them. But that kind of helps keep it all dry. That keeps help, help keeps the odor down. All right, so this is underneath my outside quail hutch. And this is a way that I've been dealing with the droppings here is I just let them fall to the ground. Um, you can see there's, a, uh, there's some flies all over it right now. What I do is I periodically come through here and throw some carbon-rich material on top of this. So dead leaves, wood chips. You can see some wood chips over there. Um, and just cover it with uh, carbon-rich you know, straw, anything like that. And then let the droppings just accumulate back over it. This is about nine months worth of droppings accumulation for this hutch right here. And it's just left out in the open. Really, there's not much odor at all. I know that was the big concern when I was talking about doing this. People were saying, oh, you're going to end up with a big, soupy, nasty mess. It really hasn't been that bad. Even when it rains real heavy, if you come out here you know, as it's raining and the rain's real heavy, then yeah, there's a little bit of an odor that goes with it. But honestly, it dries out pretty quick. It airs out pretty quick. And I don't think my neighbors even know that there's quail sitting over here this close to their... If they do, it's because I hear them, not smell them. It's really not not bad at all. This has worked out way better than I expected it to. Okay, so what do you do with your, your uh, quail manure once you've collected it up? Well, you could just bag it up in bags and throw it in the trash can and let the city take care of it and go dump it somewhere. Um, if you've got neighbors or uh, friends that garden, chances are they're going to want that. Now, you can use it as a, a fertilizer, but it needs to be composted first. It's not like rabbit manure that I talked in the last video about where it's a cold manure, you can throw it right on. Quail manure is hot, high in nitrogen. If you throw this straight on your garden or straight on your plants, it's going to burn them. They're going to they're gonna come away with, well, it looks like they've been set on fire, basically, burn. So you really need to compost it down. And depending on how you compost, which is really a subject for another video, that can take you, oh, you know, months, maybe a year or whatever. A lot of places are it depends on if you live in town or not, and you have a town, you might check the ordinances. They may frown on you having just big open piles of manure out there. They think that it's going to draw flies and breed flies. And yeah, it does a little bit, but it really hasn't been that bad, especially if you're throwing enough carbon on there. What it does is it kind of heats up like a compost pile would, so that alone kind of kind of drives the flies away. They don't really lay their eggs in a hot compost pile. So that's you know really not a major concern, but check with your neighbors or check with your town and make sure it's not going to be an issue with them. Well, I hope this video answered a couple of questions for you. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, God bless.